Information communication technology is an umbrella term that recognizes all the media that we use today, print, broadcast, cable, internet, are merged through uh, a digital platform. We use the word information in there because uh, the term recognizes that people use these technologies to both send and receive and seek information. Women and men do not have the same access to ICTs. And by that, I mean that there's an imbalance in who can receive messages using the media today. Men are still greatly in control of our media systems, so women all over the world are unable to tell their stories or articulate their opinions to the same extent that men can. And the situation contributes to women's inequality in the world. So there's a perception that the internet gives everybody an equal voice. In other words, um, that new digital technologies enable all sorts of social media sites where both men and women can say whatever they want. And to some extent, it has opened up that space. And in countries particularly such as Saudi Arabia, young people are creating all sorts of new digital spaces to talk about politics and other things that they cannot in the mainstream media or even in public places. Swedish researchers have recently published a new report showing that of the top 100 uh, or the largest media companies in the world, only six have a chief executive officer and seven have no women on their boards at all who are female. So my own research among a smaller group of companies shows the same thing. So here's the reality about the issue of gender equality in the media that we want to keep in mind. The ICT industries are greatly conglomerated. In other words, there's a lot of companies out there but only a few owners and those owners are, by and large, very wealthy men. In my own country, the United States, for instance, parent companies like Comcast own a whole bunch of other enterprises like NBC and television networks, including the Spanish language channels Telemundo and Hollywood companies like Universal Pictures and internet companies like Hulu and BuzzFeed and Recode and Slack. In Latin America, it's the same thing. Mexico's Grupo Televisa, for example, owns broadcast TV stations as well as radio stations, video scene, film, publishing companies, football teams even. Grupo Televisa does not have a single woman on its board. It's similar in Canada, in Germany, in India, wherever commercial media dominate. Very wealthy owners of the media not only control the messaging, that we see and hear. They also control the profits from these very large companies and with those profits they're able to influence the politics and laws in their country. In Brazil, for instance, they've been able to keep national legislation from being passed to limit the number of companies one person or parent company can own from being passed. In the United States they have been able to pass laws that allow ownership to be deregulated as well. That's why we have the situation we do now. Governments could take some steps, for instance, such as adopting regulatory policies that would enable more women to own media, or at least for there to be a better gender balance. They could also initiate monitoring of gender balance in media employment. Advocacy groups in the civil society could develop national level strategies to push for policies aimed to increase women's access to ICTs. And they could join with trade unions, women's organizations, university researchers, and others 